Just over a month ago, I released this video, expressing my disappointment at the weapon selection DICE had chosen to include with Battlefield 5 at launch. We had 30 primary and 7 secondary weapons, many of which we'd already seen in Battlefield 1 and most already being available in Alpha or Beta tests. That left me with very little excitement. While now having played the game solidly for about 6 days, it's clear I was wrong to be disappointed. The weapons included in Battlefield 5 are for the most part a list of World War II weapons. But they're not a conventional list of weapons. There are some missing standout players here. For example, the iconic M1 Garand. I think most people expected a weapon like that to be included at the launch of a World War II video game. With many Hollywood films and other video games in the past kind of conditioning us with the constant presence of certain battles, certain weapons and machines, it's not surprising that I wasn't alone in being disappointed with the launch selection of weapons in Battlefield 5. You could say that feeling does extend to maps and vehicles as well. Battlefield 5 is not your conventional look at World War 2, and with that angle being taken by the development team and their plan to follow World War 2 from the start to the finish from 1939-1940 all the way through to the fall of Berlin in 1945 with the tides of war, it's easy to see why so many people point out that the launch offering is not an authentic World War 2 experience. However, I have to admit that the weapon variety, the diversity and the balancing has been executed in such a way that despite the gaps in the lineup that many people can see, the lineup we have is very engaging and entertaining, especially when it comes to some of the weapons that were used in Battlefield 1 which have made their way over into Battlefield 5. That's where I'm quite surprised at what DICE has done here. I was wrong to be disappointed about those Battlefield 1 weapons. Each weapon in Battlefield 5 feels unique. It has its own place in the overall balance and I would say most of them are fun to use when they're played to their strengths. If you stray outside the gun's effective range or you try and use it in a situation where the opposing player has got the upper hand, you're likely going to fail and end up back on the spawn screen. If you take the Suomi SMG as an example, this one is quite a polarizing weapon. If you use it right, it's really good. If you use it wrong, it can be really, really bad. The thing is a fast-firing, lightweight, aggressive weapon that works brilliantly at extreme close range to take down enemies. Hitfire is really its strong suit. However, if you try and use it in a gunfight that's maybe 25 meters or longer, then you're likely going to die. Aiming down sight with a Suomi is not the right thing to do, as its recoil pattern is extremely erratic, and the further the target is away from you, the more the recoil is going to kick off of that target. Now, to many, the Suomi might not be that iconic World War II weapon, a weapon you associate with World War II at all, or even a weapon you knew existed before Battlefield 5 included it, but here in Battlefield 5, that doesn't mean it pales into insignificance. It's arguably the best SMG to use in certain scenarios. Maps like Devastation, if you're planning to stay inside the cathedral all game and protect the flag, the Suomi is really, really good for mopping up enemies. It's also a brilliant counter to support players carrying shotguns because of the amount of damage that it can pump out into an enemy at extreme close range. So even though you might not have known too much about it, here in Battlefield 5, it makes sense that it's here. What about those Battlefield 1 weapons then? What's happened here? Well, I've spent a fair bit of time with the game now, and whilst I haven't unlocked all of the weapons that have made their way over from World War 1, I have spent a bit of time with the ones I have unlocked, and I've got to say, I am pleasantly surprised with what DICE has done. The Lewis gun in the support class is a particularly interesting weapon because of the way it's balanced. In Battlefield 1, the Lewis gun was regarded as one of those more intermediate support weapons. It kind of sat in between some of the higher capacity options and some of the more mobile options. Here in Battlefield 5, I think it takes up a role that's closer to the MMGs, the MG34 
and the MG42, but crucially, it isn't classified as an MMG. It's equipped with a bipod that can deploy quite quickly, and it has the option to truly aim down sight as well. That makes the Lewis gun very versatile, and whilst it's not at the same suppressive level as the MG34 and the MG42, you can still play an important role in keeping enemy soldiers locked down in certain scenarios. Another great move over from Battlefield 1 to Battlefield 5 is the Gewehr M95 in the Recon class. This in Battlefield 1 was the standard issue rifle of the Austro-Hungarian army and it featured a very fast rate of fire due to the inclusion of a straight pull bolt and it reloaded uniquely to other rifles. It uses an on-block clip instead of a stripper clip. Now here in Battlefield 5, the M95 takes on a completely different role and it feels very different to use. The straight pull bolt system isn't active, which means you need to scope out after each shot taken to rechamber the next round. And that to me takes the weapon away from being that mobile option towards one that suits a more calculated, methodical player who wants to take a second to maybe properly line up their shots before hitting the fire button. Despite it being the exact same weapon, it performs very, very differently in Battlefield 5. It feels very different, it feels unique in comparison to other bolt action rifles that you can choose. I want to quickly talk here about another point I made in that video a month or so ago. A couple of weapons included in the Medic class being descendants of the MP18 that were used quite extensively in Battlefield 1. Of course we have the MP28 and the MP34. Now at the time when I made that video, I said I was disappointed that DICE chose to include very similar weapons in their next game. Basing my opinion on how the weapons looked more than anything else, and then extending to say that I wasn't excited to use them because I'd just spent two years using the MP18 in Battlefield 1. Well, now I'm going to eat my words and say, at least for the MP28, I was totally wrong to think that the weapon would be anything like the MP18. It is completely different. And just like all the SMGs also included in Battlefield 5, it does have its own place in the lineup. It's again a very aggressive minded SMG, closer to the Suomi, but not quite as fast firing and is a little bit more forgiving at longer ranges. Maybe you could use this at medium range, but you really would have to control the recoil. As for the MP34, I've only spent time using that at the launch capture event. I haven't unlocked it here on my personal account yet, so my experience of this weapon is limited, but I know it's one of the SMGs that pushes the effective range of the medic class out further than any of the other options in the class, and it prefers a completely different playstyle to the MP28. That's despite both weapons being very similar in looks and build. I've been proven wrong here by the DICE team, well and truly. Some of these weapons that are either descendants of weapons from Battlefield 1 or which are weapons from Battlefield 1 now in Battlefield 5, I've got to say they've done a really good job at balancing them and making them feel different. They don't feel like Battlefield 1 weapons at all. As I've just mentioned, I have not unlocked every single weapon in the game yet. I'm still working my way through all of the four classes to unlock all of the guns we have right now. I've been switching classes since the game launched with Origin Access Premiere, but I do have some favourites already. I've mentioned the Suomi and the Gewehr M95, and of course my video the other day on the MG34 should have let you know that I really like that weapon as well, but I've got to say I'm enjoying the Lewis gun as a bit of an intermediate weapon with the support class. Now, Battlefield 5's secondary weapons, those leave a lot to be desired in my opinion. I rarely think about what secondary I'm equipping, and actually, since I unlocked the M1911, I simply changed all of my classes on both factions to that weapon, and now, unless a really cool pistol comes out, I'll likely spend the next two years with the M1911 as my main sidearm, unless I feel like trolling some players with the Liberator. Perhaps DICE needs to take a little bit of a look at their secondaries and find a way to make them more appealing? I'm not sure. It might not be as important to a lot of you guys out there, but after the depths that DICE went with in Battlefield 1 with the secondary lineup, Battlefield 5 feels very shallow in this category. But there you are. 
I'll admit it, I was wrong about Battlefield 5's weapon lineup. I'm not going to say that I wouldn't have appreciated the M1 Garand in the game and a few other iconic weapons as well, but now I've had the chance to properly dive in with some of the weapons we do have and experience them in different matches, it is clear to see the work DICE has put in to the balancing, the overall diversity of the lineup, making each option feel unique and like it has a place in your loadout when that situation arises. But let me know what you guys think. Have you had a chance to play Battlefield 5 yet? Are you still waiting for it to launch in your region or on your platform? Are you happy with what the game is launching with? Or are you still disappointed? Let me know down below in the comments section. Make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications switched on. Click that bell next to subscribe. Make sure they are switched on. That way you won't miss any of my future Battlefield 5 videos. And a big thank you for watching today. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.